It's a uh, gothic bash here again, so we got a piece of bronze in the, uh, the truck right now, bearing bronze. We're going to make a, uh, a, what you call it, a uh, signal cannon. I did make one the other day, so, and it works good. Let me just make sure that's tight. Right now what we're doing is we're going to uh, just facing off the, uh, the rough cut end of this. I got it sticking out so far. I'm taking really light cuts. But starting to sound better. Maybe another another pass. There's a little bit of a spot. That right there sounds good. Okay. So let's check it. See how we're doing. Yeah, that's good. So now we're going to turn this down, and I want it about, I don't know, two and a half, three inches or so. Let me check. I might have this out too far. Nope. Two and a half, that's, that's where I want it. Alright, let's get rid of this. Put this in. Now I'm just using the uh, high speed steel cutters in this, uh, these right here. is not important. I'm starting with one inch and uh, I don't really care what it is so I'm just going to make it true it up, get it all nice and we'll go from there. thousands past right now. That looks to be where I want. There's a little bit of, uh, however they made this bar, whatever grabbed it, put marks down one side of it, so looks like we'll need another five or so. I do want to leave it as wide as I can.
box is still there. the marks on the bar. Good. That is where I want to be right now. So now we're going to we call it bore it out. I'm gonna go with a half inch bore on this one. The last one I did three eighths and works good but it's not not real loud so I'm gonna try a half inch on this one. Let's see I want the depth to be I want to leave about a half inch, so on the bottom. So I want to be about there. So we're gonna go uh, 50 millimeters. Where did I put? My center, there's my center. Oh yeah. Now when I get up into the bigger drills, I'm gonna have to slow the spindle speed down. Ow. Hit my elbow. Uh, did not feel pretty. Start with uh, 316. Uh, back now, this bearing bronze machine is pretty good, but as you can see, the chips are real, uh, real flaky. Just kind of. kind of disintegrates. You don't get the long, long stringy chips like you do with some of them. Some of the uh, bronzes and brass alloys. Backing it out. That, if you hear that, that chattering noise, that's a good sign to back up your drill, put some uh, lube on it. That's getting nasty. It's uh, anchor lube I'm using here. It's real good on this stuff.
deeper we're going, we gotta back out more often. Just because I don't want to snap a drill off that deep in there. That would be uh, no fun. At 40, so we got what? 10 more to go. inch which where the fuck did I put it I just had it out too there it is usually I drop them down in the tray and it that time it went under the tray drop that one right there then this one though unlike the last one which if you're, on, if you're looking at this from my Facebook, you uh, you saw the last one. I did uh, took some pictures of it, did a little video of the test firing and all that. We're doing something a bit different on this one. The spindle's seized up on this one, the other drive pulley, for the, uh, the slower speed, so I don't use it all that much, because it's, as you can hear, it's kind of, it's got some issues. I've repaired it, and a couple times now, so it looks like it needs to be replaced, I guess. That did not sound good. Much better. Give me a lot of resistance. I don't like that. I'm going to drill it with a smaller size first. It's okay. Whatever, we'll go with the 516s first. This machine does not have a whole lot of torque like some of the, uh, the big machines do, the bigger machines do. Now right 
now I know it's at 500, so. It's going pretty good. Now, it's five sixteenths, put that back in the index. Don't want to burn out my drill bits though, I'm trying to drill this, so I'm just gonna keep stopping it. Still giving me a lot of resistance here. now.
Okay. So that's the tree eights done. more than I want to put on there. Let's see if I can get it. Oops. Yeah, I'm going to end up spraying more out trying to get it back on. So the drilling, boring, making the main bore, that operation is done. It's getting a bit hot. Now the next stop is we're going to bore in a flat hole. And what I like to use for that is these big-ass carbide end metals. I think this one's a, uh, what's this, 11 sixteenths, four flute, solid carbide. Not a cheap little end mill. Super sharp too. So, to bore this in there, we're not going to do it under power because these drill trucks don't hold the end mills very well and they tend to chatter around or uh, spin in the drill truck. And like I said, these are expensive. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand turn the chuck as I feed in on the uh, drill chuck quill. And that's just to get a, I don't know, we're going to go what, 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter or so in there. Just to get a nice flat hole 
on it. Oh, my safety glass is fogged up. Yeah, much better. Alright, so we got this is locked down. Put some lube on there. And then the spinning starts. Oh, that one. This is the first time using this exact end mill. And it, gri it bites, so I gotta feed it real slow. You can see that bite, it's taking nice chunks out. Now this ain't the fastest method of doing it and there's better ways, see? That's why I do these by hand. Now having a, a machine that's a bit better for this type of op would be ideal, but I don't. I got what I got. And I could go in there with the small round mill and start it. Which I might do that, because, yeah, it's just spinning. Alright, we'll do that. Smaller end mill first. What, half inch? Yeah, that's half inch. Let's go with the fourteen. Go. Just gotta find out ones for the job. Yeah, I think we'll go 14 and then we'll go up to the 11 sixteenths. That'll be what we do. That's the wrong chip key. That's the right one. You'll see why I'm doing this eventually. So we want you right on the edge and we're going about 10 or 12 millimeters deep. This will just alleviate some of that sideness, side uh, wall thickness there. like to have a size bigger than this one but smaller than the other one but I don't seem to have that size end mill. I could bore it out but I don't have a boring tool for brass or not brass, bronze and I don't feel like grinding one. So this is the way I like doing this. That's ten millimeter. Fucker back in here. Should really get me a boring bar. That would make this up a lot easier. Oops. 
why I was using high speed steel tools. The uh, oops, the carbide bites right into the bronze. is indeed the worst way to do this. <laughs> I don't care about the finish quality in there, just that it's a square hole. Usually I don't go this deep when I'm doing one of these. I only go like two or three millimeters, so. Where did my brush go? Damn it, lost it. Grab a new one. Seven. So we're getting close. I think I'm going to invest in a, uh, a boring bar. I think that's uh, probably a good idea. Exactly where I want it. A little bit of work I have to get there, but it's what I want. So, put these back. Now remember, whoops, cutter, bottom. Always do that. I've slashed the shit out of myself taking these out the wrong way. Because I've dropped them in like that, dropped it on my hand, and it just falls off and goes. So, always put the cutting flutes on the bottom of your little holder thing.
Okay, I give you good advice after doing something real stupid like I just did, but that one was good advice. <laughs> All right, what do I got to do now? I got to put the other cutter in here. So I can jam fear. That edge. Don't, I'm not worried about the outside edge because, well, the outside's getting sanded. Inside edge, however, is not. Stop it, you bastard. Cooperate. There we go. So I just want to chamfer that edge a little bit. when we get to the uh, the uh, next part. This is only the first part of doing the cannon build. Okay. And that should be good. No, don't like that. Let's see, is this? That's too big. I don't like the way that tool's doing it. I'll try a different tool. Don't like the way that tool's got me. It's still sharp though. Okay, that went much better. You can see it from here, that's a much better, much better. Okay, and then we're going to uh, just touch up the face a tiny bit. Clean off any sharp edges or burrs or anything around that hole. Good. Good, good. Okay. Now our bore is 50 millimeter currently and uh, there we go. So my touch hole is going to be about 49 and a half millimeter <laughs> up and I want my ejector because this is going to look like a bullet when I'm done with it a reasonable location that looks good but I don't want it like on the last one I put the uh, the touch hole inside the ring and I don't I don't really like that now because it was hard to clean up so put my ring about there it. 
parting tool is a piece of shit, so no. Turn a groove on where I want the actual bottom to be about down here somewhere. Again, doesn't really matter. So I don't have to be super critical. I know the bore ends about here, which gives me plenty of room to play with. And I could even check the bore ends. Being about 51. So, yeah, right, right above where that line is, and it's at 51.6, a little bit deeper than I, the top, but that's okay. So we're going to make it about there. Gonna do some sanding. Yay, sanding. Get ready. We're gonna go to 400 and then I'll buff it on the buffing wheel. Let's start with the 220 because it's a pretty good finish. for the uh, buffing wheel. I'm going to buff it up on the wheel. That always makes it real nice and shiny, but brass all time. The better the finish is right here, the easier it is for me to buff it up later. Do a decent job here. Okay. For me, so far that's looking pretty good. Like a bullet. That's what I want. The lazy ghetto way I cut these off. Fucking hacksaw.
I don't cut all the way through. So you can see the bore has that step. You'll see what we're doing with that a bit later. Then down into there. This side's real nasty right now, but we're gonna take this out, chuck that up, and face it off. Real quick and easy like. Now we're just facing. So I don't want this in there real tight because I don't want to damage that that uh, marred up and you know get all them fucked up spots from the jaws on it. And we're setting up the tool. Now again, I know. Somebody's going to say, why don't you use a parting tool? Well, because I don't have a good parting tool. My parting tool is a piece of shit. It chatters and fucks up and blows up cut or indexes all the time. This one's really good for uh, acrylic. Not good in metal. I do a lot of acrylic work, so that one stays in the machine. Facing it off. You moving on me? You fucker. A little bit tighter. Like I said, I want to keep that as loose as I can. It's a kind of a really aggressive cut there. Not as worried about the bottom. It's the bottom, so the finish doesn't have to be as good as the rest of it. Let's see. Hopefully, it isn't marred up. Uh, there's a couple little marks. Those will buff out, though. Sit flat. If you don't, so wonderful.
Now we got these. Jaw marks I gotta get rid of. It's all sanded, but that'll all buff up, so don't worry about that. Oh, the nice. That's the shell part. Now, the next part, gotta break out this here fine piece of uh, Damascus. Fine piece of Damascus. I'm gonna make us a uh, Around to go in this shell. So, Joe, round, perfect. Let's see, what do I gotta do? Oh, battery's almost dead. Gotta change that. Alright, so my spare battery is dead as well, so I'm going to stop here at uh, part one, charge the GoPro, and we'll get back to it uh, next weekend.